Hi everyone, I'm Danielle Ballantyne, Managing Editor with Forward Reviews, and you're tuning in to another one of our Pity Forwards, bite-sized interviews with indie authors. Today, we are virtually sitting down with Peter Fines to talk about his travel title, A Thing of Beauty, Travels in Mythical and Modern Greece, where he takes a tour through Greek myths and brings us along as we mine them for lessons for the modern era. So, Peter, your book is something of a chimera, to, to get Greek with it, um, part travelogue, part climate change investigation. So what drew you to add that scientific layer to your travels and to this book? Yeah, I suppose it's really hard to travel now without having it in your mind. I mean, we've just finished Glasgow COP26. Uh, it's something we're all preoccupied with and thinking about. And I just found it was impossible to write travel and to write about Greece without thinking about the bigger issues behind them. And it's just, it's hard not to, isn't it, at the moment? Uh, mm. Particularly in Greece, where, which is so beautiful and such an incredible place. But also when I was there last year and this year has been consumed by terrible forest fires, which everyone is convinced is connected to man-made climate change. So it's just hard to write about uh, things without it creeping in. And I suppose I was writing about the Greek myth, which takes such a long view of everything. And uh, I was trying to do the same. So Lord Byron may not be the first person who springs to mind when people think about Greece, uh, but he was something of a guide for you throughout your journey. Um, so can you elaborate on what drew you to him as an influence? Yeah, well, Lord Byron was obsessed with Greece uh, or became to be obsessed with Greece. He died in Greece fighting for Greek independence. And, uh, and it was also because I couldn't get to Greece uh, because of the time of year, the times <laughs> that we were living in. Uh, I, was, I had the plan for the book and I was going to write about um, the Greek myths and where they emerged. And I was going to visit the different places that the myths did emerge. And uh, I found I couldn't get there. I was stuck in Britain. And instead I went to Lord Byron's house, which is Newstead Abbey in Nottinghamshire. And uh, which is a stunning place. And there's an oak tree that Lord Byron planted when he was 10, which is dead now, but he was obsessed with his oak tree and was convinced that uh, if he became ill, the oak tree would and vice versa, which is a very ancient Greek belief. So I was sitting there admiring this beautiful place, but also preoccupied by COVID and all the other things that we are beset with, you know, the awful news that keeps coming and thinking if I could get to Greece, maybe I could find a little bit of beauty and a little bit of hope. So that's how Byron comes in. And he traveled all around Greece and you can follow his route using his diary and his, his journals and his letters. So he has a lot to say on Greece. And uh, even though it was 100, 200 years ago now. <laughs> so as, a, as you alluded to there a little bit, the, the trip that you based this book around was uh, like so many of our travel plans in these past couple of years, uh, delayed and somewhat reshaped due yes. to the pandemic. So can you talk a bit about how that impacted your trip and then what would you have liked to do differently in less unprecedented times? Indeed, unprecedented times. I had grand <laughs> plans, of course I did. I was going to go everywhere, every island and every part of Greece. And uh, well, of course, what happened is that there were various lockdowns and I had this detailed plan and then I couldn't get there. And then suddenly, certainly the lockdown eased in Britain as it did in Greece at the same time. So I kind of dived through the window in October <laughs> uh, and November, then it started to close again. So um, that's how it impacted. And also when I was there, I, mean, I was in a way, it was an extraordinary time to be there because I was the only tourist at some of these most incredible sites. I was in Epidavros at the ancient Greek theater, which is one of the wonders of the world, if you can ever get there. And uh, there were seven of us there and um, wandering around. It was extraordinary. And same with Mycenae and, and all over. It was, it was empty. So that had a big impact on what I was doing. But also it just, it did keep me focused on, on um, you know, thinking about the things I wanted to write about, I suppose. Um, because it was so empty, the myth seemed sort of somehow more alive. Uh, but at the same time, I was very aware. I mean, the Greeks suffered from terrible plagues as well and wrote about it very vividly, Thucydides did. And um, plagues that would kill a third of the population, that sort of plague. So this was very much in my mind as well. So COVID sort of, I try not to write too much about it because I didn't know at the time, I keep referring it to as the first year of COVID because I didn't quite know where <laughs> it was going. Here we are in the second year of COVID, alas. So, um, you know, I didn't want to write too much about it. I was trying to write about myths and beauty and hope. Uh, my main message of the book was hope. I became obsessed with Pandora and, and the, the myth of Pandora and the box as it's called, is actually a jar. 
and how she opened it and all the evils and plagues of the world flew out and only hope was left in the jar. So I, I went literally looking for hope around Greece. Mm. I would have traveled, to answer the second bit of your question, I would have <laughs> traveled uh, all over if I could. I mean, obviously time was pressing, it always is, isn't it? But um, there were places, the place was closing around me and then I had to get back mm. to Britain again. So in a way it helps concentrate the mind. It's a very condensed book. I was there much less time than I would have liked, but it's, um, I wrung every moment out of it that I could and uh, grew to appreciate it, of course. You know, it's so hard to travel at the moment, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So uh, when, you know, it's less difficult to get there, do you have any new destinations on the horizon? And could we perhaps expect another travel book out of one of those? Yes. Um, I, well, I love travel. I used to work on travel guides. And uh, in my book, I follow a, a ancient Greek um, travel guide writer who wrote, wrote one of the world's first travel guides. So, so yes, I do want to travel again. Next, I'm off to the Western Front, which is the route of, uh, well, the Western Front of the First World War. I'm going to walk its length. It's a thousand kilometers long for something called the Western Front Way. And I hope a book will emerge out of that. Um, but I'll be walking and cycling, not flying. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you for sitting down with us, Peter, and we look forward to whatever you come up with next. You're very <laughs> kind. Thank you very much. It's nice talking to you.